I think Bolivia has been a, a beautiful hub. One of their leading Marxist academics, uh, Jose Bautista Segales, just recently passed uh, uh, about two, two, three months ago, but they've been doing fantastic jobs in terms of uh, Marxist academia and in building popular uh, a popular consolidation and, and popular hegemony and in educating the masses. If the masses were not educated, if they didn't do the work of building consciousness, they wouldn't have been back within a year. Iranian nuclear weapons development. They have turned the island into a communist hellhole. The experiment in Venezuela has failed completely. I think what Bolivia has been doing is, is absolutely beautiful. As, as a Marxist that um, as a philosopher, and, and I, I like reading these rare texts that, that Marx never published and, and stuff like that. I, I think the hub right now for Marx's academia is in Bolivia. They have some of the best, mm. ideas, absolutely some of the, the most interesting work. And they're discovering this new Marx that doesn't just say, hey, look, the re uh, revolution is going to come through industrialized society. They're discovering a Marx. I don't want to get too theoretical, but... They're discovering in a Marx that with his engagement with the anthropological works of, of Henry Louis Morgan, which was an American anthropologist, and Kowalewski was a Russian anthropologist, he sees in these indigenous communities a communistic spirit that uh, leads him to analyze that, well, in their struggle against capital's eventual expansion into these regions, uh, where you're going to have is a situation where uh, if, they're, uh, if they defeat it, they'll be able to build socialism which is different from the proletarian revolution, which requires a building of class consciousness and then the, the actual praxis, right? Which is, you know, a dual effort. You do both at the same time. But he had faith in a revolution coming from the third world and grounded in these indigenous traditions. He also had similar comments on Russia, which not many people know. He had uh, letters um, with a, a, a Russian. She eventually became a Menshevik. But Vera Sasulich, where she asked him, hey, well, there's some Russian Marxists here that say we need to go through capitalism before we can have socialism. What do you think? And he's like, no, my stage theory is not linear. It's linear in terms of Europe, but in terms of the rest of the world, you don't have to go through all of these stages. You can build socialism if you're ready for it. Um, as long as you have the industrial development that capitalism has created and you got that, right? So um, I think Bolivia has been a, a beautiful hub. One of their leading Marxist academics, uh, Jose Bautista, Segales just recently passed uh, uh, about two, two, three months ago, but they've been doing fantastic jobs in terms of uh, Marxist academia and in building popular, uh, a popular consolidation and, and popular hegemony and in educating the masses. If the masses were not educated, if they didn't do the work of building consciousness, they wouldn't have been back within a year. Most definitely. Bolivia is one of the hubs of revolutionary socialism that doesn't get some of the credit deserves a lot of great Marxist writers. And I'm glad you mentioned a lot of the Marxist connection with support for indigenous struggles, because one of the lies that the postmodernists, the liberal academics, they've tried to create a division between Marx and indigenism, Marxism and indigenous society. And they say that Marx was a racist white man from Europe who only valued the European white working class. And it's interesting because in learning about the legacy of Marxist supporters and followers, Karl Kautsky and Trotsky and some of that sector certainly had Eurocentric understandings of Marxism and they emphasized that. But Marx's dialectic was very flexible and very inspired, like you said, by the indigenous composition of societies in the Americas, especially in Peru and, and the organization of the Inca people. And as I'm, I'm currently reading, I'm struggling to get through volume one of capital it's long i highly suggest people read it because there's so much gold in that book uh, so many bits of wisdom in that book but I, I highly suggest people read it in in capital marx talks about workers and humans as extensions of nature and not separate from it which is a concept that is inherently indigenous this understanding that we aren't these separate detached beings from nature we're part of nature we're in a dialectical relationship with nature that 
even though in appearance we appear to be two separate disconnected entities, we are in fact one entity united with one spirit or totality. And that's fundamentally rooted in a lot of the indigenous ontology of reality, of understanding of life. And it's very beautiful to see, right? Because that's something that in a lot of postmodern Western academia, they're like, Marx was this racist guy. And it's like, no, in Latin America and the Caribbean, indigenous people are studying Marx, applying Marx to indigenous society. And it's just so ironic. And that's why I tell, like, I was, I, I went to NYU for my, for my graduate program a few years back. And I learned more outside of that than, than in graduate Western philosophy and academia, because they, t they totally invert a lot of what real Marxism is all about. 